right? So uh, I continue to talk about why those are the calculation, but we need to know about technology, right? At least have a picture, know what people are talking about. This is a cross-section of a transistor, right? And each of this cut is a cut of the wire. This is the wheel, right? This is the wheel. It just happened that you cut the wheel or some we call it wire, right? This is metal, maybe metal 16 or 17, I don't know. Maybe this is the pet, or pet metal, I don't know, maybe. And then metal 16, metal 15. Right, and all the way 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Then this is the transistor, so small, very small transistor, right? So you, I hope you have the idea. Don't just look at your layout or just, uh, just a schematic. You have the idea, say that, hey, when I go up there so thick and the resistance is going to small, to be small. So you can run very long line. Hey, Professor. Yeah. This is cross-section cross view, right? Yeah, cross-section. What happens if you like, uh, let me see. I mean, can you draw uh, like uh, in different angle? So this cross-section for me, like a little bit hard emerging because I see it's, Not, the materials kind of stuck together. It's like yeah. a pockets. Yeah, so for example, this is the bird wheel. Okay, you look, look from the top. Okay, and you do your layout. You might have a metal, metal 17. Okay, this is the metal. And then underneath this metal, you might have another wire. Okay, metal 16. Where's the transistor? Transistor is here. Wait, you see my very tiny circle? Here. The CMOS transistor. Here, this one. Okay, okay, I got it, I got it here. Oh. <laughs> okay, so what you're doing is this, you cut here. This oh. Okay. Cross section. So I got it, I got it. Yeah, yeah. Cross section uh, transistor is at the very bottom. Okay, yeah, so that is what we call front end of nine, middle end of nine, and back end of nine. This is very different from what they call back end of nine or, or back end routing or whatever. This is the process front end, middle end, and, uh, uh, and uh, back end. Okay. And the, the reason you need like, uh, you know, you, you see like the 17 floors, is it because like the very complex collections between transistors? So one floor is not enough. Because you need connection. You cannot let the wire to cross over or they will short. So how can you connect to another transistor without shorting another wire? You need to go up to another floor to connect. I got it, I got it. Thanks for yeah. that. Yeah, good, good question. Yeah, okay. So nowadays what's going on? The problem is nowadays the transistor is getting so small, smaller LG, smaller R. But however, the contact resistance get increased because we have smaller area. You see here, it's getting smaller and smaller, right? And at the same time, wire can be longer because we're having larger design or we actually uh, make the distance smaller. Think about this. Maybe this is the old time, right? Maybe this is the old time. But now the new, new, new design, maybe like this. I don't know what, what to draw. Maybe let me just draw here. It is actually smaller and also closer because you make it denser, right? So the capacitance is getting larger, it's closer. 
right? In the old time, it is small. Right? This is the wire. Right? So you have a larger capacitor or, or you have la uh, longer, uh, longer wire. So because of this, the parasitic uh, RC are getting worse and your transistor keep improving. That's why now you need to do so-called design technology optimization. You cannot just make a great transistor. You cannot sell any product. You need to have a great floor plan and great contact and, uh, and all these resistance to make it uh, work well, okay? I repeated many times already. Maybe you feel very bored about this, but we still want you to be aware of this. This is what the industry is facing nowadays, okay? Now, if you have a internet connect parasitic, I think you all know why they are good or bad, right? First of all, you have capacitance, definitely. You have resistance. You may also have inductance. Why inductance is getting worse? The main reason is this. The, cap the impedance of inductance is omega times L. The frequency is increasing, right? So as a result, ZL increase. You cannot ignore it. Although now slow down a little bit the frequency, uh, increase of frequency, right? And what's the big deal? Well, you increase the propagation delay, performance. You increase the power consumption. Why? CV square, right? The, the power consumption. Power. You create more noise, all this uh, coupling, right? So you cannot make them too close, direct, indirectly affect the area. So I try to link to PPAC. The cost, of course, is important, but it doesn't come here. We don't have the money. But of course, eventually it affects the cost, right? So again, it's PPAC. Any questions? Now, then let's take a look at the modeling of the wire, right? We talk about how to model a given wire, lump circle or whatever, but that is just a, I tell you there's a wire. But now if I really look at the layout, what happened? It's very complicated, right? This is the real reality in layout, right? This is the bird wheel, right? Just now the student asked what, what we are doing. We're actually cutting here, cross-section. That's why we see all those bosses, right? You need to solve Maxwell equation. No one is going to do that, impossible, right? Or this is what we have been doing in the bus schematic. All of this transmit at the speed of light. We never consider the delay, right? So what we can do is for each of them, we can add the inductance, capacitance, and resistance, very computational intensive. If the resistance is small, we can, only, we can just add the capacitance. So there are different ways of modeling. You pick a way that is good for you, reasonable, okay? Now, so what can we do? Uh, first of all, we need to, we definitely need to model resistance, capacitor, and, input, and inductance, right? That, but sometimes we really want to ignore that to make it simple. First of all, if the inductance, uh, if the rise time is large, it meaning like this, then I can ignore the L. Why? Because this is equivalent to low frequency, lower frequency component. If you do a Fourier transform, a smaller rise time, let me say it is less high frequency component. Right? And remember, I just show you that if you have a long wire, you have a large R, this one is going to die out gradually, right? It won't be as sharp, right? The rise time won't be large. In that case, we don't need to add the inductance. Okay. And of course, if it's short, we can ignore R, then we just consider the capacitance, right? And sometimes we can ignore the capacitance if the separation is wide or overlap is small. What do we mean by overlap? For example, I have a metal wire running on top, metal two. And then, I have another metal wire running 
underneath, right? Metal one. They only have a very small overlap. Then I can ignore it, right? Actually, I was uh, working with a student on this uh, wire capacitor yesterday, right? On my research project, it was for resistive memory, right? Then we decided we only need to model the capacitance between wire metal, uh, metal two, right? We only need to model this one because they are close, right? We don't care about the capacitance between M1 and M2. So, so I, I don't know if you feel that I'm not teaching you anything useful on this slide, but these are all common sense. So maybe you know already, but just reinforce that is what people would talk about. And you can use this to simplify your calculation. Okay. Now then, you know, uh, for people, they actually need to look at the whole CPU chip though, but this is an old figure, but it's still the same. You will see many of the nice, this is in terms of lumber, lumber of net are very short in a CPU. And, but you do have a few nine that is really long, talking about 110 millimeter. So this may be the power distribution nine, this can be the crop line, right? These are the line that has a lot of impact by the parasitic resistance. That was the case in the past. But even now, when you go to the techno uh, shorter technology and better, I mean, better technology, even shorter line has some impact. So in the, pro in the process of scaling our die, we scale them differently. One using, using a scaling parameter. S is the scaling parameter from node to node. Okay. Okay, maybe uh yeah, I think still a few minutes, a few more minutes. Then I want to just uh talk about how this Y capacitor is coupled with other capacitance, okay? Now, this is probably last slide for today, and I think I cover all the things that you will see in the midterm already, okay? Um, now, um, or in the assignment. Now, so what is the scenario? Scenario is I have an inverter here. I try to drive another inverter. It doesn't have to be inverter, it, be, it can be gate, but we make it easy. So what is the loading? What is the CR? I want to see the propagation delay. And you can see that if you remember for each transistor, we have six, for example, here we, in the first stage, right? For each transistor, I have five capacitor, C, G, S, C, G, D, C, G, B, C, D, B, C, D, CSB, right? But only this node, the D node has effect. So you see that I basically don't have e nothing from CGS, nothing from CGB, right? Nothing from uh, CSB, okay? But I do have CDB, but I have two transistor, right? I multiply by two, two X. This is, and I also have two transistor, two X. That's why I have CGD12, CDB2, CDB1. Similarly for the driving stage, I have the gate capacitor. Now I lump them together. So what is the loading capacitance? It's not just CW. You also have CDB2, CDB1, CGD12 and then the loading CG3 and CG4. Many capacitance. And that is later, you are going to learn how to do it and uh, calculate in your assignment, okay? Uh, so that's all we have for today. Any questions? Yes, sir? Yeah. Why CGD12 consider as load? Uh, not 12, uh, one, two, yeah. Why it is no? Because you need to change the potential here. So it is a loading, right? 
because you need you do need to change the voltage for this capacitor it means you need to supply charge to it or you need to supply current to it so it is a loading but this one you see the cgt12 the other end collect to v in yeah okay you okay i you see the cgt12 one one terminal collect to see v out the 